were said to be 650 victims. This figure, however, came from a claim made by a servant who said that she had heard Bathory's court official, Jakob Silversey, say that he had seen the figure written in one of Bathory's journals. The journal was never produced or cited during Silversey's testimony. Stories of her serial murders and brutality were testified by over 300 witnesses and survivors. Because the 650 count of victims could never be substantiated, the official count of victims for the trial was 80. Physical evidence of mutilated dead girls and imprisoned girls were also shown at the time of her arrest. All testimonies confirmed the victims were adolescent daughters of local peasants, enticed to the castle with offers of well-paid employment as maids. She has also been said to have killed the daughters of lesser gentry who were sent to the gynoseum to learn etiquette. The testimonies were all consistent regarding beatings, burnings and mutilations as well as freezing and starving them to death. In the Budapest city archives there are accounts of girls being scalded with hot tongs before being placed into freezing water. Other accounts say some victims were covered with honey and live ants. Elizabeth Bathory was born in 1560 into a family of nobility. She grew up at Eshed Castle and she was bestowed with wealth, education and social standing. She got engaged at the age of 11 to Firenze Naldadi and they married when she was 15 and he was 19. It was said to be a political arrangement, and because her standing was higher than her husband's, she kept her name Bathory. They were married for 29 years and they had five children. They lived at Chatiski Castle in the village of Chatiski. Her husband died in 1604 at the age of 48 due to an illness. He left his wife under the protection of Gregory Thuzo, the Palatine of Hungary. From around 1602, rumours had started about Bathory's atrocities. In 1610, King Matthias II hired the Palatine of Hungary, Gregory Thuzo, to investigate. The testimonies of 300 witnesses from noblemen to commoners were questioned and collected. She and four servants were arrested. At the scene, they claimed to have found one dead girl, one dying, one injured and many others locked up. A trial and execution would have caused a public scandal and disgraced a noble and influential family. Elizabeth's considerable property would have been seized by the Crown. Thuzo convinced King Matthias that bringing Elizabeth to trial would negatively affect the nobility, so the trial was abandoned and instead Bathory was imprisoned in Chatiski Castle. The four servants who were alleged accomplices all made their confession under torture. They were then sentenced to death. One was burnt at the stake another was beheaded and one received life imprisonment because it was shown that she was bullied into being involved and had not taken part willingly. While the servants were publicly tried and executed, Bathory was imprisoned at Chatiski Castle in solitary confinement. She was kept in a small set of rooms with only small slits for ventilation and food. She stayed there for four years until she died. The day before her death, she had complained about having cold hands. She was found dead the morning after. Two authors, Laszlo Narg and Dr. Irma Sadiatsky Kardosh, believed Bathory was the victim of a conspiracy.
Nagi believes the proceedings against Bathory were politically motivated due to her massive wealth and ownership of extensive areas of land. Her land ownership increased even further after the death of her husband and it was shortly after he died that the rumours are said to have started. There was also the idea of a Catholic conspiracy against Bathory who was a Protestant. Another interesting point is that King Matthias also owed a large debt to Bathory, which was cancelled after her arrest. It also came to light that most of the witnesses who testified against Bathory said that they had heard the accusations from others, but didn't actually see anything for themselves. The servants confessed under torture and they were eventually executed. Many years after her death, Bathory became the subject of stories about vampirism and how she liked to bathe in the blood of virgins. This story first came to light in 1729 by the Jesuit scholar Laszlo Turozzi in a piece that he wrote called Tragica Historia. However, these claims have never been proven and the stories came into question in 1817 when the witness accounts were published and they had no reference to the bloodbaths. Despite there being no reference to acts of vampirism, the vampire legend has lasted throughout the ages and has become part of national folklore and even popular culture. There have been many fictional depictions of her, such as Hammer's Countess Dracula with Ingrid Pitt telling the legend. Blood Scarabs shows her as the wife of Dracula. The 2004 movie Eternal portrayed her as a serial killer. A Swedish black metal band named themselves Bathory. Elizabeth Bathory was a convicted serial killer with no fair trial except witness accounts and the public executions of her accomplices. She has been described as the most vicious female serial killer of all time, but many of the facts and the fiction are blurred. Was there a political or religious motive to have had her convicted and locked away in order to make a grab for her wealth and lands? Certainly over the last two and a half years we have witnessed first-hand accounts of the lies and setups which authorities and establishment will create in order to push a narrative or an agenda for their own gain, regardless of the consequences to others. Was it simply that she was guilty on all counts? While we will never know the true extent of the crimes Elizabeth Bathory did or did not commit, her memory has been immortalised in legend and folklore. The strange case of Elizabeth Bathory is one that is destined to remain a mystery. Ginger fairies.